Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is an overview of the experience of the HTC Hero. We're going to go through the Sense UI that HTC has brought. Um, in addition, we're going to talk about the Android experience and how it's different than other phone operating systems. Now, in future videos, we're going to drill into the web browser, take a closer look at the, the application store, they call it the market, plus compare it side by side to other mobile phone platforms such as Windows Mobile and iPhone. But in this video, we're just going to take a overview of how the phone actually functions and works. Works. So let's get started. I'm going to press the power button and immediately we're taken to this unlock screen which is pretty useful. It shows us the time, the date, unfortunately not next appointment. We get a preview of any message that we have such as an SMS or a missed call down here at the bottom. It says hello, it's an SMS. Now I really like the way that the hero unlocks the screen. It's just by a swipe downwards with your thumb. The reason I like this so much compared to say uh, the iPhone where you have to position your thumb right in a certain area, slide to the right, or even Windows Mobile 6.5 where you have to go to the top of the screen to slide over the lock bar is because you really don't have to be precise. You can unlock your phone without looking when you're walking down the street and you're not really paying attention to your phone. So just a quick swipe of your thumb and you are to the home screen interface. Now we've talked about in a previous video, and I'll put a link up on this video, how the whole widget-based interface works. You can add and remove widgets. You can have up to seven screens of different widgets. You can even download additional widgets. For example, this battery meter does not come stock, but I've added it, which I think is a nice little addition. So let's talk about how you actually access programs in Android on the HTC Hero. Now, like the iPhone, you always have to go back to the main screen in order to access programs, which is a bit unfortunate, whereas in Windows Mobile, you can go up to the Start menu to your recently used program list and just tap on any of the uh, recently used programs and jump right into it. Now, Android does do multitasking, unlike the iPhone and like Windows Mobile. It actually keeps several applications open at one time. It intelligently closes applications based on how much RAM that you have. So you're going to notice if I open an application and go back to it, it opens up very fast it doesn't have to reload it saves the state that the application was in which is really important if you're doing something in an application so anyway to access programs on the hero you tap this up button in the bottom left corner and you get a list of all your programs now unfortunately there's no real way to organize or group these programs out of the box and it can become a very long list of programs fortunately like a desktop computer a Mac or even a Windows computer you can take an icon let's take a chess. Tap it and bring it onto the desktop, or if you want to call it the desktop, it's really the home screen. That way you can quickly get access to the programs that you use most, and you can also have you know many different panels of icons available. So that is how you get to the programs from the main screen. Now there's a really intelligent notification system in Android, and this isn't unique to the HTC Hero. Other Android devices has this as well. If you pull down the window shade, you get a list of all of your notifications in one screen. Now the reason that this is quite cool is because your phone is always trying to tell you something. You have new email, new SMS, a missed call, or perhaps you're using a Twitter application that ties into this notification system. It'll, it, it'll alert you when you have new tweets, or if you're using perhaps a stock program um, that, that is trying to alert you when a certain stock reaches a certain price, that functionality exists, that capability is there in Android. So of course we can just go to any of these notifications and just tap on them to drill right into um, that particular notification area. So really interesting. Also, you get sometimes a preview of a message. If you get an SMS and you are currently in another program, you'll often get a little scrolling message at the top that'll give you a preview of what the person said to you. And then you just pull down the notification shade and you action on it right there. Now let's go into a few programs. Again, we're going to drill into more programs specifically later, like the web browser. But for now, let's just poke around and kind of get used to how the whole Android interface is laid out. Um, let's start off with, let's say, uh, let's go into the calculator. Keep it simple. Now, in Android, in an attempt to save screen space, they've really hidden uh, most of the menu items. So in order to change a setting, you have to click on the menu button down here and then you'll get the any available settings that are available. I think this is actually pretty cool because it saves on screen space, but simultaneously, because the menu items aren't on the screen to begin with, there's always an extra key press that you have to do to bring up the menu items. In fact, for the whole system-wide settings, you have to press the menu button, and then you go into settings, and now we go into system settings. 
One of the biggest problems with how the settings are laid out in Android is that they're not graphical based. There's no icon next to it. So if I'm very, very quickly trying to change a Wi-Fi setting or trying to change the wallpaper, I actually have to read all the text that I see here. Whereas in Windows Mobile or an iPhone or other operating systems, you can quickly glance and see the little icon that you're looking for and drill right into it. It's very, very text based in Android when you go into the settings. And the second screen is the same. And here is scenes we've we've saw we've seen that in in a previous video, and so through here you can change typical things right. Go to wireless controls. You can change Wi-Fi, what Wi-Fi network you're on. Turn on airplane mode. Uh, pair a Bluetooth headset or a hands-free kit. Change your mobile network settings. And by the way, I had to add the uh, an access point for. Uh, AT&T, it didn't come with that information uh, out of the box. It didn't auto configure itself to AT&T. And we put a post up on Pocket Now that shows you how to configure for AT&T. So let's go back. And as you can see, in Android, to go back to the previous screen, you press the back button. Now, it doesn't work like Windows Mobile non-touch screen where it will go back to the previous program, then to the previous program. It will only go back to the previous screen within the same program that you're in. So. We can go back again, back again, and eventually we are back to the main screen. If we press back again, nothing happens because we are where we started in that program. Now let's go into the mail application and talk about what that looks like. So if we tap on any message, it will open up in a new screen. Look at the look at the lag. Did you see the lag right there? That's one of the biggest problems with the uh, with the whole HTC Hero and Sense UI is that it's quite laggy and slow at times, especially when opening email, something that should be rocket fast. Now, something that's reminiscent of TouchFlow 3D from Windows Mobile devices are these buttons on the bottom. Watch this. Does it look familiar? It's right out of TouchFlow 3D. The email application is really cool because what it does is it actually sorts by certain uh, characteristics. So this is my plain inbox. If I go to conversations, it will actually group um, email conversations by, it'll, it'll, it'll actually show me threaded email. So I can keep track of you know five conversations in, in five different areas rather than having to look through 15 different emails. So very nice. We can go to messages that are flagged, and then we can go to messages that have email uh, that have attachments on them. So this TouchFlow 3D kind of interface carries over to other parts. So if I pull up a contact card, let me take it off the screen, we get HTC's unified communication view. And you saw this in Windows Mobile and TouchFlow 3D. The idea is that when you look at somebody's contact card, you can reference quite quickly whether you've had any SMS conversations with them, any email conversations with them, if they've got any Facebook updates, if they have any picture updates from Facebook or Flickr, and you can see their call history all in one screen so that you don't have to kind of dig through a million different places to find out what you've said to a particular person. So that's come over from Windows Mobile, and it's a really great concept to have on a, on a phone. So let's talk about the on-screen keyboards, because obviously the Hero doesn't have a slide-out keyboard like the G1 or other mobile devices. So the on-screen keyboards are very important. Fortunately, HTC really knows a lot about on-screen keyboards by now. Uh, this device has a capacitive touchscreen display. So think about the keyboard that comes on a device like the Touch HD or the Touch Diamond 2 or even the Touch Pro 2 or you can go back to the HTC Touch Pro or even the Touch Diamond to understand how good the keyboards are. So I'm gonna to try to type something out here and it's kind of a weird angle, so. So it uses T9 to guess what you're trying to say. You don't have to be exactly precise, just like on the iPhone or other on-screen keyboards out there. Now there is a version in landscape, so let me flip it over and it kind of takes a minute, which is one of the problems with the uh, which the Hero. And then you get a much, much larger on-screen keyboard. You also get a little bit of a haptic feedback when you type. So a very, very good on-screen keyboard, because the screen on the Hero isn't as sensitive as it is on, say, the, uh, the iPhone. Typing takes a little bit more getting used to, but uh, if you have a concern about getting the Hero because it doesn't have a built-in keyboard, you don't need to have that concern. The keyboards are really fantastic. I've gotten much, much faster in using it in just a few days, and I'm very, very comfortable on it, especially with the vibration feedback that helps a bit. Now to hide the keyboard, in Windows Mobile, of course, you would press the button in the center here, but there is no such button. So we press the down button, and it, it hides the keyboard off of the screen. 
Okay, so let's take a look at a few of the programs uh, as we wrap up this video. Let's go into the calendar and see what that looks like. So the calendar, again, looks very TouchFlow 3D-like. Uh, we can tap on a date to see what we're doing on that particular date. And we get the weather right on one screen, which is really great. Uh, we can go into menu, and again, remember Android hides all of the settings for a particular screen behind the menu button. And we can go to, say, uh, agenda view. A little bit of a delay. There's a lot of delays in the Hero um, when you open certain programs and when you jump from screen to screen. I don't think it's as fast as it needs to be. Uh, we can jump around. We can make a new appointment. We can go into the settings. And again, just like the settings in the previous screen, the whole system-wide settings, they're very bland and black and white, very text-based, very half-baked look looking. Some people may appreciate the simplicity, but I rather have icons for everything and a better hierarchy so that I can look down the list and not think that everything looks the same at a quick glance. So let's go into some other programs. Let's go into the phone. And of course you can access the phone by doing this call start button or by pressing the large phone key here. And I'm going to cover up part of the screen uh, because there are some phone numbers listed up there. So if I tap on phone, I get this large keypad. And let's say you're trying to dial, you know, um, Jessica. So you would type J-E-S-S-I-C-A, -S -S and it would guess as you type what number you're trying to type. So it's very quick and easy to dial people on the Hero, which is fortunate, considering that it is a phone. So let's go into a few more programs real quick. And let's go into the YouTube application. The YouTube application is not as glamorous as it is on Windows Mobile and iPhone. It's very, very light. And so we can scroll down and see little thumbnails, and we can do... I will just tap on one of these, see what it looks like. Mean Kitty. That should be entertaining. And we go to Landscape, and here it is. The video is playing. We're doing it over Wi-Fi right now, so it downloads pretty fast. Video quality is quite good. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, so click the back button to go back. And a lot of programs work in landscape. The App Store works in landscape. YouTube does. Which is good because sometimes you want the option of getting kind of a widescreen view of a certain application, if it makes sense. In the case of this application, I'd probably have it in portrait. Uh, because if you go into landscape, you get fewer results on the page at once, which really doesn't make too much sense. So overall, I found the experience, the user interface, and the way that you use the device on the HTC Hero, or really Android in general, to be kind of a mixed bag. There's a lot I like, a lot I don't like. I like the customizable home screens that allow you to not only have icons on there, but you can have widgets, next appointment, stocks, all kinds of different things that you keep an eye on on a regular basis. I like the unlock screen. You can unlock it without even looking at the screen. I really like the notification window shade because within seconds, you can access anything that needs your attention all in one place. I also like how applications can actually tap into the uh, notification window shade so that Twitter, for example, can tell you when you have new tweets. What I don't like about Android and, and the Hero is how you have to go back to the home screen to open any programs. Um, and as you can see, I just got a text message and it shows you it right here at the top, which is really awesome. Um, so to access any program, you always have to go back to the home screen and press this up arrow here. Now, Android does have a feature. If you tap and hold the home button, you get a list of the six recently most used programs. And that would be awesome if you could access that in any screen. But if we drill into a program, tap and hold on the home button, it just takes you back home and then you can open it again. Uh, Android can multitask. It leaves several programs open. But if you can't switch easily from app to app, then really what good is multitasking? So really, in the end, there are three things from keeping this device from being my daily driver. Uh, one, it doesn't have US 3G, which will obviously change probably in the near future. Um, two, it needs a little bit more horsepower. There's a delay when, when you have a lot of widgets on the home screens or when you are trying to bring up an email. And number three, I love to find a way to multitask, to switch from app to app within seconds. I'm sure there's some kind of third-party application that exists for this, and when I find it, I'll make a video about it so that we can, uh, we can have that feature available. But coming up soon, we're going to talk about more specifically certain parts of the Android operating system, such as the Marketplace and the web browser. We'll be back soon with more. That's it for now.